Welcome, welcome to Two Tunes Podcast. Yeah, podcast, podcast, podcast. Um, did you see Barbie? No, I haven't oh seen. Oh my god! It's so either good. of the Boppenheimer, Barbenheimer movies. I was in Tech Week all last week, man. Okay. It was it was a lot. Yeah, Tech it's, Week it's and good. then an opening weekend for one of the longest musicals in America. Yeah, it's so long. Although. Yesterday, so as we record this, we have finished weekend one, which is four shows, and then we've got eight more shows. Uh, show number four was under three hours, mm-hmm. including intermission and everything. Like, we have a two o'clock start time, although it's always like 2.05 just to allow for audience. And then, like, when we were, like, when I cut off the last note, it was at like 4.58. It's pretty good. Cool. Because that thing can stretch out real yeah. easy. Yeah. So, but it's good. It's going very well. Uh, I think as this comes out, we will be done. So I can't encourage people to go, but I'm doing it on social yeah, media. This is aug- the second weekend, Se- second week of August. Then yes, like we'll have you're you're in you're in band camp, probably. <sighs> Heavy sigh. Yeah. This is probably my first week of I don't have to do anything. Mm. Finally. Yeah. No guitar lessons. Nice. No I'll just be starting play rehearsal. My, my grad classes, I guess, again. Yeah, I'll be <laughs> dedicating. Oh my god, my grad class. I have to write a bio. Mm. I have to write a resume. Okay. Or Those create. Should and, be easy to do. But I want it to be good. But then they want you to include things. Is like, well, what about like? I want you to make this as if it's 2027. <laughs> so, so like, include things that actually haven't happened yet. Yeah, but then I'm like, well. You should put in there like four O on my masters. <laughs> hint hint. <laughs> well, uh yeah. Anyways, I don't want to do it. I don't want to create I don't want to write and I gotta do a four page paper. Like this this whole class is more like an overview of like the whole program. Okay. So like one weekend or one week you recorded stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I like recorded stuff and I turned it in and then like that's the only time I recorded. And mm-hmm. I'm like, this is Yeah. I don't want to do this. And now I got to do a whole bunch of writing. What's your paper know. about? Um, cause they, like, I don't have to come up with it They're, They They give you a topic. Oh, okay. Which is also kind of like, why I you... find that I, as much as I dread writing, yeah, I can usually fill up. I usually write too much. Yeah. Actually I, our, I, our, uh, friend, Dr. Lovell, when we took his class together, yeah. that was one of the things I got dinged on, on certain assignments <laughs> is like, that dude. it was supposed to be two pages and I wrote like two and a half. Because I just couldn't, yeah, not. Um, so what? What is? Where's the the thing? Um, paper exactly four pages, four full pages of content. Um, uh, your assignment is paper to write current. Okay, your assignment for this paper is to write about the current streaming models and fee structure and determine if it is a sustainable model for musicians. It's not. Yeah, but that's, that's it's not in yeah. the largest font you can fit. <laughs> um, just four the pages. last page is just like it, a period. It is not not period. period. <laughs> Exclamation point! At least that'll take up the whole page. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So what do we do here, Bo? We talk about two. Count them. One, two, tunes. tunes. Uh, and we also bullshit. Like, I saw Barbie. Yeah. And, and the but you be- didn't see the... I didn't see Oppenheimer because I, I really want to go see it in IMAX 70 oh, millimeter. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to have to go to King of Prussia to do that. Oh, yeah. So I drive an hour and a half to watch a three-hour movie. I did that with um, The Magnificent Seven, Quentin Tarantino's one. They yeah. Did a special screening down there. Yeah. It wasn't an IMAX. It was, but it was not The Magnificent Seven. Oh no! Wait, the Hateful Eight. Sorry, the Hateful Eight. <laughs> the Ma- I'm like, that's Close a enough. really old movie. Close enough. And I don't which think... they did remake. They did remake the Magnificent they... Seven, but yeah. his was the Hateful Eight. Yeah, sorry. Magnificent Seven is is a great movie, and it's uh, it's a remake. Like the original is a remake, isn't of, it? Of a the Seven Samurai. Samurai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's been. Oh my God! There's so many versions of that thing. Yeah. So if you okay in an ideal world, yeah. You can see Barbie and Oppenheimer same day. Yeah. In in the circumstances you want. Yeah. You know, which one would you see first? 
Because um, this is the question, like, which one do we Yeah, which one do you see first? first? Yeah. Uh, you see Oppenheimer first because apparently it's super depressing. Well, and then you watch Barbie. Apparently. Second. I mean, we all know what generally what the story is. Yeah. I want to learn the more of the story uh-huh. because this is, like, focusing on him and he, obviously he's going to be the hero. Right. Um, well, here, I don't even, I don't know if yeah, he yeah. turns out hero. I mean. But um, I just want to see it because I like uh, Christopher Nolan movies. Mm-hmm. Like, Hopefully we can understand this one. <laughs> true <laughs> i have true. not the, i have not seen any criticisms about that at all yeah but i want to see it in centering millimeter because i don't think i've actually ever seen anything like that anything besides like the biggest damn movie and it, oh, was, yeah. it was a it was a movie about uh beaver dams mm-hmm. and it was at the science center in cleveland nice um and i think i did see uh puss in boots in chicago in IMAX. at an imax nice. in 3d <laughs> I did see. Um, <laughs> it was so I don't even know why. Was what? it Endgame or was it Infinity War? One of them. One of them I saw in IMAX, and then I've seen yeah like other things. I saw one of the Harry Potter movies in IMAX too. It kind of made me like. Do you go to King of Prussia or was this somewhere else? Uh, so the um, Avengers one was in Lancaster, and Harry, that, Harry Potter I'm pretty sure was in Harrisburg, at Whitaker Center. Okay, the Whitaker Center is. And I, I, I don't know. It's it's so weird. There's like we there's like different, like it says it's an IMAX, but it's like this isn't an IMAX theater. Obviously, it's not an IMAX. Right. But like if you go to a real IMAX, or things theater, that are like formatted for like there's a difference too in like the way they do them. Like yeah, did they film it to like like Christopher Nolan filmed this movie to yeah. be presented in seventy millimeter in IMAX, like yeah. yada yada yada, and then other times they just kind of like convert. Same thing with three D. Yeah, they can convert things, but. Um, yeah, I, I don't know when I'm going to get to see them. I really wanted to see them in the same day. Just do like a double feature for myself. Five hours of film. That's fine. I've done that before. I used to on July, f- like on July 4th or around July 4th, do like a double movie mm-hmm. thing. Um, I haven't done that in a few years, so I don't mind that as much. But, um, yeah, I just, my schedule I don't think is going to allow for it. So I will just look at the movie times and see when I can see either one. Mm-hmm. It may be worth to me seeing Oppenheimer in a regular theater and then yeah, doing it mm-hmm. on IMAX, but I don't know. We'll see. I missed Astro Astro City. Asteroid City. Asteroid. Is it out already? It's gone. Yeah, yeah it's not. In, it's not in the theater that That's I, would what go I mean. To I mean, to it's like see it out of free. theaters. Ooh, actually, you know what? I should just check to see if it's in another theater that I'm allowed to go to because of my. My thingamabobber. You could also just pay the like twelve dollars or whatever and go see the movie. It is not in that theater. Anyways, we're here to talk about two tunes in your first. Okay. This is a weird episode. A lot of uh, downtime. So who's your person? Who's my person? It's a it's a quintet of people. It's five okay. persons. It's not a person, and it's the person, and oh, then other, it's the person four other people. <laughs> Quintetto. Yeah. So, uh, apologies for not knowing how to pronounce his last name. I'm going to take two stabs at it because I think one will be correct. Uh, Diego Skisi or Diego Shisi. Um, I'm th- I'm leaning more towards Skisi, um, which is actually more Italian pronunciation, but it says he's from Buenos Aires, so maybe I don't know. Um, the SCH though in Spanish, I don't, I don't think you really see. You see it more in like Italian or German, and in German it's a sh sound, mm-hmm. and in Italian it's a sk sound. So I'm gonna go with Diego Schisi. Uh He's a pianist, um, studied in America, um, studied jazz and stuff, and then um, ended up back in um, Argentina and doing um, tango music essentially, or his version of tango. Um, there's an article I found from 2012 um, where they released an album uh, called Tongos, which is his version of, of tango, tango. Uh, it's sliced, it says sliced three ways, just like its parent form. You got the tongo itself, the canción as the waltz, and liquido as the cut time. So I guess tango, like a lot of um, these sort of like Latin musical forms, is, is a dance form. And so like there's different sections and different ideas and different things with them so Uh um yeah so this is his quintetto this quintet um i found out about these folks 
from, I think, Darcy James Argue, great uh, composer uh, and band leader. He was somewhere on his travels around the world this summer, or late spring or something like that, and um, posted about them and was like, oh, I got recommended these guys, got to see them live, and it was fantastic. And I was like, oh, cool, Like, let me look them up and um, came across them, so or came across this particular tune, which is called Audible. Uh, it's from their album uh tay from 2021 it is the opening track and i'm gonna look up what that means do you know what that means arbo nope but i when i looked up arbo um uh, it's, it, it's it tree it means a, tree. a lot of things <laughs> came up mm-hmm. apparently quite literally it's a tree but i wonder if it's like something else as well yes is it like a dish Chili de Arbol is a specific type of chili. Do, 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 do. It's probably something else. There's also a, a parish in Spain, a couple parishes in Spain. And the field of Arbol is a name of, for the solar system in C.S. Lewis's Space Trilogy. Okay. Oh, Chili de Arbol. I've heard of that. Okay. It's probably a dance or something. Any one of those things. Yeah. So here, here is Arbol. It's supposedly playing. Oh, uh, I don't hear it. I don't either. Oh, I know why. <laughs> it was playing the whole time. We just couldn't hear it, which is did fine. Did you restart it? No, I did not restart it. What? No, restart it. Why? We heard it. They heard it. We did didn't they? Hear it. They did. You, I you've could said see that it. before. I could see it being recorded. Okay. And then I just hit the letter I so that we could hear it. So... Um, is it a con- uh, what is that? That I think it's uh, there's violin, but yes. I think there's a no- violin, a con- bass, piano. What's the other a, thing? It's concertina, accordion, accordion, I think, yeah, or some version of accordion, yeah, because yeah. uh, you can hear like, perc- the percussion, I guess, yeah. What, what would you call this style of music? I mean, I'm guess, guessing just from his... Th- it's his take on sort of like Latin tango in particular from Argentina, I would, I would assume. that little line the yeah. duet between the two I like the way they use we should, really should figure out what type of I'm gonna say accordion but again I think it could be like a specific type of one um, but I like the usage of it in different ways like Looks like it might be the ben, bendoneon, which is just a, just a type of accordion type thing or concertina. It's like, is it over? Oh crap, nope. I gotta stop it. And that's not true. Is that what he's playing? Is he that or is he the... Well, no, I, I mean, it says he's a piano player, so I assume... Here we go. So Diego on piano and composing, Guillermo Rubino on violin, Santiago Segret on bandoneon, uh, Ishmael Grossman on guitar, and then Juan Pablo Navarro on double bass. So it, it, it isn't actually percussion. They're just doing percussive things on their instrument. 
Like, at the, especially at the beginning, like there's some slaps and some taps and different things. Yeah, it's cool though. I, I really like this album. I listened to it a, quite a few times since I found it. Um, but that track, just again, I don't know if it was primacy bias or whatever, just being the first one I heard. But it's also probably a reason why that one's the first track. Like it just kind of draws you in, and all that rhythmic stuff is really cool. I do. It would make a cool, uh, like I think that would transfer well to like concert band. Like if you trans- yeah. transcribed it for a concert band piece, it would be pretty neat. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I hear things in those ways. Mm-hmm. There's a oh December in New York by um, Bill Lawrence, which we featured on here a mm-hmm. while ago. That tune in my head, there is a, a wind ensemble arrangement for that tune in my head. I just have to get it down on paper. But this tune, I could hear that as well. It would work work pretty well, like, I think, in that format. You would lose out on the col- like certain colors. Like you oh, have yeah. to try to imitate them in certain ways. Like you know, maybe the clarinets become the, the bendoneon or whatever, but yeah. But yeah, I dig it. Something kind of different. Okay. So any, any other mid, mid episode conversation? I don't think so. Just go straight in. Sure. Be a short one. One drink by iced tea. <clears throat> kind. Peach. Just sweet from McDonald's. Sweet. So it tastes not great, but you it's... should get half and half. Like sweet and unsweet, yeah. Half sweet tea, half unsweetened tea. Mm, but I just prefer sweet tea. No, it's too sugary. It's it's a pound for four gallons. You're a pound for four gallons. <laughs> That's that was inappropriate. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't either. Um, so I I discovered this band through a cover that I was thinking of bringing at a point, and okay. it, it was Jump. Mm. Yeah, that Jump. Bump, bump, bump. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just got bad news on my phone. I'm sorry. Yeah, a uh, friend of a friend died. Mm. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Anyways, this band's called Good Terms. Okay. Here's their bio. The short bio, not their one-page bio that I have to write. <laughs> Good Terms is your friendly neighborhood emo band. After years of working behind the scenes in the music industry, this group of best friends finally joined forces to get back to the roots of what made them first fall in love with music. The Los Angeles-based quartet embraced their DIY spirit of the scene they grew up in by recording, producing, and mixing all of their own music. Good Terms maintains a diverse sonic palette that spans the... uh, a anthemic emo pop to blistering double time hardcore with a sprinkle of everything you know and love from the warped tour universe. Sure. Good terms invites you to become a part of their community and par- participate in the catharsis they've found together. Mm. This is some big words. Bi- bios are fun. <laughs> oh my God. Um, here, this, this is what I, I, I yeah. Anyways, I'm not going to read that what I did because it was, I, I, I like, like this. I like this thing. Uh, they blend the slick and hi-fi sounds of today with what, with that tried and true, quote unquote, hell yeah, brother, rock and roll feeling of yesterday. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, like they did a cover of Jump mm-hmm. by Van Halen, which is I was gonna bring, but I mean maybe we can we still can because covers don't fall under the rules of rules that we don't have. <laughs> yeah, you are the one that has the rule about like not repeating people, and yet. I haven't and re- yet. <laughs> no, I haven't repeated anybody. Not technically. Yeah. But anyways, um, they don't tour. Apparently, there's no tours. More shows to- coming soon. They're from Los Angeles, which means that they're probably gonna only play California. Mm-hmm. You can buy their tie dye shirt if you would like. Yeah, yeah, I know. They have a bunch of tie dye shirts. Um, but not a tie dyed rancid shirt. He wears his Birkenstocks to work. Okay. Their lyrics from uh. Um, I, a no effects song. Okay, which Catbite just played with no effects. Nice. Last the, over the weekend. Um, this song's called Cough. They also have a Van Halen parody T-shirt. Obviously. I just wanna cough. The shit that I've been sucking off isn't strong enough. I think I've had too much. I'm tired of this fucking fog and hiding stuff from my mom. These habits I'm not so proud of. 
the uh, vocals mm-hmm. and the guitar being on the other side. Dig that. Yeah. And then. And he actually coughs. Yeah. This is stereotypical pop punk. Yeah. Ooh, that was good. The when it's not was really. There go another. Imagine if this is a country song. Because pop punk, I, yeah. I, I, I can sometimes I can mm-hmm. hear that like that, that could be a country song. Yep. Yeah, I can hear that. Yeah. Oh, this harmony, man. <laughs> I don't. I, I wish I had more to say. It's, it's like a straightforward. I think. I, I'm, I'm. Every time you listen, you find something new. Uh-huh. And this, I'm just noticing that like all of the verses are different. Bridge. Those drum fills are interesting. Mm-hmm. Down chorus. I like this part. Bass line. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out tonight. This is where they do the... <laughs> really you know, either that or it's how you close out. You like just kind of yeah. like groove on that, vamp on that for like a little bit. Thank you guys so much. You know, it's been a blast. Yeah. We're good terms. I have an anecdote I'll share about that sentiment, but I'll wait until the sentiment's over. Yeah. Is it a minute? I just wanna... Yeah, this is this seems like a closer. Yeah. The same way it started. Yeah. Like we're lighting up cigarettes. It could definitely be one of those ones like you just hit and you just kinda like let the guitar ring and just like lay it on the ground on the stage and let it just go while you walk off. <laughs> so the anecdote I have is that yeah. my, my top jazz band has um, a theme song that we play yeah. at the end of a lot of our concerts, not all of them. And um, there's this, like the final eight bars in the music, it's written to be played twice. And I've at certain points we've done it where we like do it a few more times and you kind of like bring down the volume and then like the last time then you bring it up or whatever. But one of the times we did it like, I don't know, like nine years ago or whatever, um, I had this notion that like while they were like bringing it down, I would, I would like sort of send us off. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for coming. You know, we really appreciate it, blah, blah, blah. You know, big hand for the other two bands, and and this has been a CD jazz orchestra. And like the one, that time that I did it, it was so perfectly timed for when they came back in with like the big one. Yeah, that like I've been chasing that ever since, like trying to do it, and it <laughs> never works out. So, <laughs> but I think about that, I'm like, oh man, it was, it was so good that time. Have I ever told you about um, the the set of Scott Two Network? So they start out with uh, 1980. 1985 yeah yeah yeah. so so they start that off and then there's like this break in the song Uh uh-huh 
So like they start the set with that song and then like when that break happens, they stop and then they play their set Mm -hmm. and they're like, all right, thank you for all for coming out. And we have been Scott to network and Springsteen Madonna. And then they finish it. So like the whole set exists. Do they play? You're saying they play this song or it's like they've done this. It's on the speakers as they come out. No, no, no. no they, they, they are playing. They the are song. playing it. And they then stop the song do during the set. break. That's, that's pretty fun. And then they play they, their set, and then they finish the song at the end. That's fun. Yes. What's okay? So what's the difference between Scott Two Network and Jer? Scott Two Network is a cover band that covers them in a a style. Okay. And Jer is the original. That's music. what I did not know. Okay, cool. Yep. Cool. That's the difference, guys. Nice. Good to know. And Scott Two Network is Jer. Jer plus folks, right? Like brings in other folks. Oh yeah, no? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because well, I, I when they're live, sure. Um, well, because okay. I listened to one of their cover things. It was like it was like Scott Two Network goes emo or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it was a bunch of different singers. Yes. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes they'll bring in uh, other people. Okay. With with the covers, sometimes depending on on what it is. So I gotcha. know that. I know that that Brit from Catbite has sung on some things. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the girl from Half Past Two is sings on stuff. Usually, it's like female singers that I can think of. Gotcha. Um, Reed plays. Reed, being the lead singer of We Are the Union, mm-hmm. um, will play when Jerry goes out as the guitar player. Okay. Um, basically, I think. I think Jer just has We Are the Union as the backing band. Okay. I think. Yeah. Because it's kind of like, well, why not? Why wouldn't you just like mm-hmm. uh, you you take the lead for this? Yeah. And and not have to be like, oh, I got to find a different drummer. Right. Yeah. It's like just use the drummer we have. Sure. Um, but that's just my assumption. I don't know. I haven't actually seen Scott Two Network, but I know that they play like conventions okay like like, could have played comic con this past weekend yeah yeah Uh, but it's it's like one it's one specific one it's not vidcon though Hmm. but it's it's a convention yeah by the way yeah of all of the um comic cons (laughs) that i would have liked to go like like actual comic con like san diego comic con yeah yeah this would have been the one that i think i would have liked to go to the best why because it was not like no because none of the studios were there they've been slowly taking away no i know but like they had already announced and maybe it was because they knew the strike was looming and stuff yeah that they were all announcing that they weren't going anyway i think Mm -hmm. marvel was actually one of the first ones to say that they weren't going to really do anything like they weren't doing hall h and all that other stuff yeah but i did see a bunch of creators and different things that either were going or, or have gone in the past and they're like oh so it's actually going to be like comic con like a, like, a, like like the way comic con used to be and stuff you know like not that you can't reference movies and tv shows and stuff but like yeah it's just more it's more about these creators and and the art and the different stuff and mm-hmm. so like it seemed maybe better in a way i don't know i've never been to anyone any like small huge Ever. At ever. So I went to one once mm-hmm. in But it's uh, just saying anyway, just saying that it seems yeah, like it would have been better. In in two two thousand two maybe. Mm-hmm. And it was uh Wizard World. Mm-hmm. Um which is Wiz- Wizard was is a, a comic book magazine mm-hmm. and it was like it was the big one before uh San Diego became what it what it is. Right. Um and I went to that but I didn't do it right. Okay. Because we went and I didn't see any panels. Mm -hmm. I just went to the, the floor. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's all I want to do. I got, that's all I want to do. I got Jason Muse to sign something, but he wasn't paying attention to me at all. He was paying attention to some girl. Mm -hmm. Um, Did he write, Bo Snoochie Booches. Well, he probably Love wrote Snoochie Booches, and Snoochie Booches, but like he did, like wasn't like, Couldn't, oh, it's nice meeting yep. you. No, I'm paying attention to this girl over sure. here. Yeah. Um, Kevin was there, but I don't, I didn't meet them. Uh-huh. And like that's it. That's the only memory that I have is like I did that thing, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay. Yeah, like I want to go. I want to see. I mean, it would involve me going to San Diego, so like that's its own thing. Yeah. But like, I just want to walk around that, can, like the the floor, the floor, and go to all the different artists and. 
I would want to want to want to go to panels, things. but like not panels for like like you not gotta, in, you got you got to fight to get not to in the Hall here. H. Basically, you don't want to spend your whole day waiting in line. I would to see Tom Hiddleston from like a <laughs> hundred yards away. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like I want to go see Kevin. Um, and that's pretty much it. That that I know that's like they're there all the time, but like the actual comic panels. Mm-hmm. So like. It, back in the day when vertigo existed as what it was mm-hmm. like i'd go to the vertigo panel and be mm-hmm. like oh this stuff like yeah, yeah i guess it would kind of be pointless for me to go now because i'm not as invested in comic books as, as i used to be yeah like i would i was weekly there yeah i had a pull list and everything yeah. and like when i when i moved I, it, I found a place and then i was like yeah and then i stopped so, mm-hmm. so i'm like i'm just not gonna get into it anymore it's expensive kids yep Real expensive. You know, this is expensive. You in, know, it's... in addition to <laughs> collecting and buying of records, is the buying of the things to then take care of the records. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, totally, one hundred percent. With yeah. comic books, I would be like bag and board, and bag and board yeah. every time. And it was like oh, I read this episode ep- issue, and then I put it in, like mm-hmm. put a tape, put it in the thing, and then I have so many. I need to get rid of them. Yeah. I need to sell all my comic books. Um, and really, I need to go through. Well, I need to go through my records and catalog them. But as I've been, I call it cataloging, even though I'm not cataloging. What mm-hmm. I just, what I've been doing of like putting them in new mm-hmm. outer sleeves and inner sleeves and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm finding like doubles and triples of things. Not the ones that I buy on purpose because there are some of those that I buy on purpose. But comics or no, no, no records. 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 Okay, that's what yeah. I thought. But I've been fi- like like Tony Bennett just passed away. Yes, but I have three copies of Bennett and Basie. Mm-hmm three copies of that i need one good one like one good um sleeve or yeah what sort i'm looking for like the cardboard i want one sleeve right yeah yeah i want one like find the best one of those find the best record pair those up then i'm good and i have some other ones i did find so i collect um or i buy every copy of a phil matson and pm singers album that i can find just because it like means something to me because he was a former teacher and mentor and friend. And, um, but the one I just bought most recently was from when I was down in Alabama and in, they had, I came across a bunch of these in the jazz section. It was this guy who was like a DJ in St. Louis, like a, like on the radio DJ. And it was from his like private collection. And so they had like a little slip of paper in all of them that said, these are from this guy's private collection, you know, just so you you know basically they whoever his family or whatever that like donated these records they they just want people to know that like those are his records and stuff so that was kind of cool so like i got another copy of this album but now this one actually has like an extra layer added to it which i thought was kind of cool so that's all thanks for listening everybody that's it we'll see you next time do all the socials discord uh, Instagram. We need to be better at Facebook, this. Facebook, all those things. Anyways, we'll see you next week. Por Bye. Favor. Bye.